Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. Welcome to part 3 covering the Connected Conform workflow. In the previous video, we looked at the process of linking all the segments metadata across the sequences in the sequences reel. After creating the shot sequence, we also renamed all the VFX shots in order to easily manage them. This could also potentially be used for collaborative shot distribution. And finally, we looked at applying and synchronizing timeline effects to linked segments across all the open sequences. In this video, we look at how batch effects and batch work across the linked sequences. If you would like to follow along, please go to the first video and click the link in the YouTube description to download the media. Alternatively, if you're watching the podcast version of this video, then please refer to part 1 for the URL. So previously, we looked at timeline effects, and it is relatively easy to make an adjustment in any segment within any sequence, and sync the changes to all the other sequences. Now when it comes to batch effects, the processes are more or less the same. However, there are a few rules you need to follow in order to maintain the link between the segments. So select a segment and call up the effects ribbon. Apply a batch effects to the segment. Now we entered batch effects with a single selected segment. Back at the sequence level, the original segment's metadata is copied to the new virtual batch effects segment. This will maintain the metadata link between all the linked segments in the other sequences within the sequences reel. Now since this is not a lesson on compositing, go ahead and create your own composite in this batch effects. I want to point out that you can add additional sources into the batch effects, but the point is that you created the batch effects inside a single selected segment. Now exit batch effects. The segment has changed colour because it's a BFX clip, but if you ALT click for its properties, you will see the link icon as well as the same metadata from the original source media. Let's sync the batch effects to the other sequences. Call up the contextual menu and choose to sync shared segments. When you toggle between the different sequences, you will see the batch effects applied to the matching segments. Now there are other ways of creating batch effects segments. For instance, you could multi-select a bunch of layers and create a batch effects. Unfortunately, if you want to maintain the link between the matching segments, this method is not recommended. The reason is that when you create a batch effects with more than one selected segment, the new batch effects segment does not know what metadata to use. Therefore, all the BFX segment metadata is reset to zero and no links are maintained. The same applies when applying a batch effects to a gap segment. Since this is also a virtual segment, it has no links to other segments. So this is also not recommended for the connected conform workflow. As long as you follow the guidelines of using a batch effects created off a single segment selection, you should be able to retain the link between the segments. Now everything effects-wise up to this point has been connected directly to the sequence. So if you are someone who likes working within the sequence, then the timeline effects and batch effects will work for you. But if you are a flame artist who prefers to work outside the sequence, say for example on a shot-by-shot -shot basis, or even collaboratively with other flames and flares, then you have the desktop tools and batch. With the connected conform workflow, a few new processes have been introduced to allow you to use these tools. This includes maintaining the links between all the segments from the open sequences within the sequences reel. Please note that you can use any sequence, but you should use the shot sequence to always ensure you are working with the longest version of the shot. Now you can manually match out the shots. You would move these clips into separate batch groups and you could continue to work on the individual shots. However, this takes quite a while and you could break the metadata link between the segments. So a more automated method is found in the conform area. Now if you watched the previous video, 
you might remember that we identified every shot by renaming each segment. This is linked across every sequence in the sequences reel. So instead of manually separating and preparing each shot to be worked on, you can select the entire sequence. Above the Sequence tabs, you will see a button called Create Batch Group. You have the option to create the batch groups in the Desktop, Libraries, Shared Libraries or you can pick a destination. When you click the button, all the sequences are analysed and using the shot naming system, new batch groups are created. In my case, I just created the batch groups in my current desktop. I'd like to point out that this is selection based. So if you only selected a few segments, only those segments would generate a batch group. But it's also worth noting that any BFX segments will not be converted into batch groups. Looking at the sequences, you will see that a new version track was added to each sequence. These are placeholders for any rendered clips that you replace back into the sequences. This workflow is not so different from the external publish workflow that has been available in previous versions of Flame Premium. The big difference is that instead of externalizing the media as before, the media is still internally managed by Flame. You could even refer to what we've just done as a managed media publish. So with the batch groups all separated out, you can work on the individual shots or distribute the workload via the shared libraries. So let's switch over to the batch area and choose to work on the batch group with the multi-layered composite. Now before you do any compositing, there are a few bits of information you need to be aware of. When a batch group is created via the conform area, the render node will always be attached to the background. When you select the background clip, the in and out markers from the sequence are retained. All the metadata from the background clip as well as these markers have already been copied to the render node. When you double click the render node and look at the render list, you will see that all this information is already assigned and you should not need to make any changes. The tape name and timecodes will be the same as the original source clip, but the output name will be based on the shot naming assigned to each VFX shot. As before, go ahead and build the composite in batch and render the result. By default, the rendered clip has placed itself in the batch renders reel. If you ALT click on the clip, you will see that it has all the metadata matching the original source clip. I also want to point out that the in and out markers have been carried over. Now this won't automatically update in the sequences since this is a new piece of media. However, if you replace the media in the placeholder segment on version track 2, this will update all the linked segments in the open sequences. So switch back to the timeline area and switch to a dual view with control 2. Change the primary focus to version 2. So this segment still shows the original background clip. Go to the first frame and select the segment. In the media panel, select the rendered clip in the batch renders reel. Click the go to in button. To frame accurately replace the media, you need to ensure that both the source and record positioners are on the first frame or in point of the segment. When the frames are lined up, you can click the edit box pull down menu and choose to replace media. You can also use the Ctrl Shift R hotkey. The media for the segment should be replaced. Please note that if you performed an overwrite function instead of replacing the source media, then a new segment is edited into the sequence and the link is lost. By using replace media, you will see that the media is updated but the link icon still remains because the segment metadata is unchanged. Remember we differentiate between segment metadata and source media. If you toggle between all the sequences and the new version track, you will see how the same media has updated in every sequence. So if you are developing a composite outside of the sequence, you can work in a batch group, 
render multiple iterations, and replace the source media as time progresses. This will update in all the linked sequences within the sequences reel. Now just to show you that the workflow is quite flexible, let's say you wanted to add the timeline effects on top of the batch render we've just replaced. Select one of the other segments with the timeline effects. Hold CTRL and select the Colour Warper and Matchbox timeline effects. Drag them on top of the new batch render. So that's applied the timeline effects to the segment in this sequence. Like in the previous video, select the segment and render it. The other sequences have not updated because we have changed the metadata and not the source. To update the metadata on the segment in the other sequences, call up the contextual menu and choose to sync shared segments. Flicking through any of the open sequences in the sequences reel, you will see the changes have taken place and the rendered timeline effects has been synced and shared. As a final tip, if you converted a few selected segments into batch groups and not the entire sequence, then it might be worth converting version track 2 into a video track on version track 1. This is something that might take a small amount of time, but it's optional depending on your workflow. To conclude this three-part series on the Connected Conform workflow, please remember that all sequences within the sequences reel can have source media and segment metadata linked. The shared media functionality works within the confines of the current reels group. If you have got to a point where you want to break the link and develop a sequence as an individual, then you can move the sequence into another reels group or remove the segment sharing through the contextual menu. There is a lot more functionality available when using the Connected Conform workflow which will be explored in future videos. This should hopefully be enough to give you a good starting workflow. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.